In this one I'm going to look at the one-to-many bidirectional relationship in Doctrine. I'll start out with a couple of entities and I'll establish a relationship between them using PHP and PHP annotations. Then I'll examine that relationship in the database before creating a couple of objects and having to play about with them in the code. If this is the first time to my channel, make sure you subscribe. There will be lots of stuff like this coming up. And now let's get into it. If you followed the setup video, then great, you'll be starting at the same point as me. I've just got an empty database which I've called Doctrine Relations, and then I'm going to go over to PHP Storm where I've got an empty Symphony 5 project, and I'll start by creating a couple of entities. So this is going to be really basic. It's just going to be a manufacturer and product relationship. So we'll create our first one manufacturer, then we'll create the product. And we're just going to give these a couple of fields each. Uh, we'll just give them a primary key and a name. So in Manufacturer, we'll create a private property called ID, which is the primary key. And we'll also create a private property called Name. So Manufacturer Name. And we'll do exactly the same thing in Product. So we're creating primary key ID and a field called Name. Then I'm going to start to consider the relationship between product and manufacturer and how I'd like to use it in the code. So ideally, I'd like to be able to do something like this, product get manufacturer. And so this is where doctrine comes in because probably its main purpose is to be able to just um, write code in PHP without thinking too much about the tables which sit behind the objects. With the manufacturer property added to the product class, I'm now going to move over to the manufacturer class and I'm going to make this an entity. And I do that by adding a couple of PHP annotations to the class itself. One called entity and one called table. So the entity annotation that you see here is just to say to Doctrine, hey, this is an entity, you may treat it as such. And the table annotation, I'm using this here to specify that the table name should be manufacturer. You've probably seen some auto completion going on there. That's because I'm using a PHP Storm plugin called Symphony Support. Highly recommend it because some of these annotations aren't easy to remember. So now I'm working on the ID property and this is going to be an auto incrementing primary key. So um, that's what this last um, annotation means, generated value. Basically tells Doctrine how to generate this, this number, which we're using as a primary key. So for my SQL, the, and the default is auto, but if you're using Oracle or uh, Postgres, then you'd use sequence. So auto, as in auto increment for MySQL, sequence for Oracle and Postgres. Next, I'm going to turn my attention to the name field, and I'm just going to add one annotation to this. I'm just telling Doctrine, I'd like this to be a column, and I'd like it to be a string type which translates to varchar in MySQL. And what I've done there is I've just cut and pasted, I've cheated a bit and added the same fields to product because they are pretty much identical. Then I'm turning my attention to this relationship for the first time. And so thinking about this in real world terms without thinking about code or database tables, a manufacturer can manufacture many products. So what we're saying is that the product entity is on the many side of this relationship. So I added many to one annotation and I'm saying that the target entity, i.e. the one side of the relationship, is the manufacturer entity. And then I have the option of adding an inverse, i.e. a property on the manufacturer class, which represents the inverse of relationship. Now I say it's an option because you don't actually have to add it. But if you want to do something like this, manufacturer, get products in your code, then it makes sense. So I think that's a possibility. So we'll add that now. Products is added to the manufacturer and I switch back to product and I add it as the inverse. And now I'm going to think a little bit more about the underlying table structure. So this is where I establish the foreign key using a join column annotation. And I'm going to say manufacturer ID will reference the ID column on the manufacturer table. And you'll notice that I don't actually have a manufacturer ID property. That's because Doctrine helps you keep your code really object oriented. So instead of 
um, working with foreign keys in your code, you'll always work with references to objects and Doctrine converts those references to foreign keys internally. And what I'm doing here, null bot equals false, is I'm saying that a product must always have a manufacturer. Now I turn my attention to the manufacturer itself. And like I say, this product property is optional. Only add it if you're going to use it. Don't write more code than what you need. And so the way that we read these annotations is left to right. We're now in the manufacturer. And so we're saying one manufacturer to many products. So like we did with the product class, we say target entity. And this time the target entity is product. And instead of using inverse by, to find the inverse on the owning side, we say mapped by. So it's mapped by manufacturer. And with the properties on both classes and the relationship established on both entities, that's why we call it a bidirectional association. So if we just said that we're going to put the manufacturer property on the product class, and we'd only establish the relationship there, then we'd call that a unidirectional association. Next, I'm going to move to the console and I'm in the root of the project and I just run this command, which you see on the screen. And what that will do is it will look at the database, look at our entities, see what's different and create migration files from them. So let's check out what it's made and I'll just tidy this up so it's a bit more legible. So it's put two create table statements, one for manufacturer, which is fairly straightforward, and one for product, which is the one we're interested in really. And you'll see this manufacturer ID column here, which is the foreign key. And that points to the ID uh, column on the manufacturer table. And our work on that isn't quite finished. We've just got one more command to run, which is doctrine migrations migrate. It will say, are you sure? Because we're making permanent changes to the database. We click yes. Now let's go and check out uh, what's changed in the database. So I'm going to refresh. And there you see two new tables, manufacturer and product. So we'll check those out. Manufacturer ID and name, just like we specified. And if we check out product, we see ID, name and a manufacturer ID column. And it indicates that that's a key. So let's look at our foreign keys. And just like we expect, owner, product, and the reference table is manufacturer. Then I really need to start thinking about my code and how I'd like to use it. So I'm in manufacturer and in the constructor, I'm going to set my product property to a new array collection, which is a doctrine collection. And what that will do is instead of me just using a standard array, and having the limitations of a standard array. Um, with an array collection, I have a lot of real handy methods for adding things, removing things, and checking whether things already exist. So that's great. And then after that, what I want to do is add my getters and setters. So set manufacturer, get manufacturer, set name, get name. The only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to remove set ID because that is done when the record is saved to the database. Now, the way I expect to work with this is that when I create a new product, I'm straight away, I'm going to set the manufacturer. And so then I'll be able to say product, get manufacturer. However, if I was to say manufacturer, get products, the new product which I've created wouldn't yet be part of that collection. So the steps we need to take in order to do that. So um, I've created the getters and setters like I did in product and I'm removing set ID and so I won't really say manufacturer set product because that won't make much sense. I'm going to add a method called add product which takes a product as the argument and I can just add it to products even though we're using collections I can just add it like I'm adding to any normal array. Then I need to add my getter also get products and you'll notice in the doc block that I'm returning a collection interface and that's because when it grabs the products from the database, it doesn't set them to an array collection, it sets them to a persistent collection. Slight subtle difference there. And if you'd like me to cover more of that stuff and the reason why, then maybe I'll do that in a future tutorial. Leave me a comment down below. Let's move back to the product entity where I want to be able to set the manufacturer on a new product and also add that product to the manufacturer's collection all in one go 
and this simple method allows me to do that. With that it's time to move on and start to have a bit of a play around with this stuff. So in my controllers folder I'll just create a controller called Doctrine Relations Controller. That extends Abstract Controller and then I just need to create a method for having a bit of a play around with this stuff. I'll call that one to many bidirectional and I'm going to need an entity manager, so I inject entity manager interface and then I'll just add some routing at the top. So um, with a bit of auto completion I just type route that will give me a, a symphony component routing annotation route and then I'll just give this the same name as the method one to many bidirectional. And then what I'm going to do, I'll just start very simple. I'm going to create a manufacturer and store that. So new manufacturer. And then it just has one property which I need to set, which was name. I'll just give it a name. We'll call it Acme. And then what I do is with the entity manager, I persist that. That doesn't add it to the database yet. That just brings that. It just brings the manufacturer under the entity manager's management and then in order to uh, really save it to the database I just need to flush that and then uh, what we'll do is I'll print a message to the screen um, just to say what's happened so we'll say a manufacturer record has been created with the ID and once you actually run Entity Manager Flush, then the ID of the record will be added to the manufacturer. If you followed my setup video, then you just need to go to the same address as what you see at the top of the screen. And as you can see, manufacturer record created with an ID of two. And the reason it's two is that I, uh, I messed up a previous recording. So I've had to insert a second one. And we've got the database, and as you can see, there it is, ID2, name, Acme. Brilliant. I'll now remove some of this stuff and uh, start working on saving um, products to the database. So instead of um, creating an, another manufacturer, what I'll do is I'll get the existing one that I've just created from the database. The easiest way to do that, if you know the ID, which we already know has an ID of 2, you can just use Entity Manager and it takes as the first argument the name of the um, the class name of the entity and then as a second argument it takes the ID. And so let's start creating a product. So product equals new product. And then I'll need to set a couple of properties. So set name. We'll go with radio knob. Acme radio knobs. And then I need to set the manufacturer and I simply set it to the manufacturer entity which we've just retrieved from the database. And so uh, here's a extra little tip here. If you want to check which um, entities are currently being managed by the entity manager, i.e. which ones would be uh, persisted if I call flush, you can uh, use this method called contain. So I'm just going to dump it out and show you what I get. And so it's saying true for manufacturer and false for the product. And the reason for that is, as you'll notice, is I've not yet persisted it. So what I'll do is I shall persist the product and I'll go back and check that again. And now it says true. So they're both under management of the entity manager. Let me now demonstrate a bit of this relationship between manufacturer and products. So if I was going to go up to the top here, just underneath manufacturer and say manufacturer get products, which I'll dump out so that we can see it in the screen. I'll just add a bit of um, auto completion here. Manufacturer. And then we go back to our browser and we check out uh, this collection key here. We can see uh, it's empty. So 
if I then move that line down here below where we set the manufacturer and if you remember what this did it actually added the product to the manufacturer's products collection so we refresh and there's our product in the elements array of the collection so let's now save that to the database very simply entity manager flush let's remove this line and we'll add a different message we're just going to say product record created with an id of and there we go product record created with an id of one let's go and look at the database select star from product and there's our product id one name radio knob and manufacturer id of two which was the primary key of our manufacturer that was fun i hope it all made sense look out for the next ones where i'll be covering other kinds of entity relationships if you want to see more content like this make sure you give the video a like and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the notifications bell if you wish to be alerted to new content